to the uh, highest court in the U.S. The Supreme Court has issued two major rulings on the final day of opinions. In both cases, the court ruled 6-3, to three, siding with conservatives. Here's Jim Spellman. The first case involves plans by the Biden administration to wipe out some $400 billion worth of federal student loan debt, up to $20,000 per borrower. The court ruled 6-3 against the program, finding that the plan exceeds the president's authority. About 43 million people have federal student loans. 26 million borrowers have already applied for loan relief. About 20 million people would have seen their debt completely eliminated, according to White House estimates. President Biden says he will work on other ways of forgiving student loan debt. Today's decision has closed one path. Now we're going to pursue another. I'm never going to stop fighting for you. We'll use every tool at our disposal to get you the student debt relief you need and reach your dreams. It's good for the economy. It's good for the country. It's going to be good for you. In the second decision, the court ruled 6-3 in favor of a Christian graphic artist in Colorado who says an anti-discrimination law would force her to make websites for same-sex marriages. She says that goes against her beliefs, and she argues that the law violates her First Amendment rights to free speech. Speech should be protected. Today's victory protects not just me, but protects the LGBT website designer. Everyone should be free to create consistent with what he or she believes. And whether your views on marriage are similar to mine or perhaps different, nobody should be forced to create a message that goes against his or her convictions. Those who oppose the ruling call it a blow to LGBTQ rights and say it opens the door for discrimination against blacks, Muslims, Asian Americans, or any other groups. They say it essentially could nullify anti-discrimination laws. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington. We're going to dive a little deeper into the uh, student debt relief decision and what it means for borrowers and perhaps what the Biden administration might do next. Uh, Joseph Williams, senior, uh, former senior editor of U.S. News and World Report. Good to see you again. Um, I, I think, I don't want to say we're surprised because we already kind of had a little leakage going on in terms of we were prepared that this would uh, likely go the way the decision went. But it doesn't mean the end of the story, right? So for our international um, viewers, while they may not have the debt forgiveness done now, President Biden came out and spoke earlier and said that they're working on a, a plan B. What's that? Well, the plan B is to have uh, Biden try to wipe away this debt through an executive order, trying to use kind of an end run around what the Supreme Court said he couldn't do. Uh, he also may try again with legislation, depending on whether or not the Congress flips in the upcoming 2024 elections. So basically what you have here is a fight between uh, the Republicans and the conservative side who believe that no debt should be uh, forgiven. People got themselves into this mess, therefore they should be able to bay themselves out without a government bailout. And the government, the, the, the White House, which is basically saying that if this debt is forgiven, it's going to be good for the economy. It will help people get a leg up. And by the way, this is what government is supposed to do, is to help people move forward in their lives. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Biden can thread this particular needle between what authority the court says he doesn't have and the authority Congress has to help him execute his plan and whether why, or not that Congress is willing to do it. Why did the court say that the Education Department doesn't have the, I guess, um, I don't know what the legal term is, but the standing or the permission to push forward this forgiveness plan, which, which my understanding is anywhere between ten dollars and $20,000 per uh, person with the student loans? That's right. Well, the average student debt is right around 40 grand, and this uh, this uh, plan of Biden's would only forgive about $10,000 of that, and even then, only for people who are earning less than $125,000. Now, the reason why the spending was in dispute is because Congress, ordinarily by the by order of the Constitution, has the power of the purse. They alone are the branch of government that's responsible for spending money. Biden, however, counters that Congress, in fact, did authorize him to spend this money through the HEROES Act, which was a piece of legislation designed to, to relieve student debt during the pandemic. So Biden is claiming full authority as the result of something that Congress gave him, but the court says, no, that's not the case. And the big central issue was whether or not the states, the, the red states who challenged the president on this law, 
actually were harmed by the fact that the student loan debt was being forgiven. And the court apparently sided with the states and against the White House. Right. And, and by the way, just to clarify, and I'm, I'm just going off what you said, this isn't a forgiveness plan. If the average debt is 40000 and there's 10000 we're not forgiving the loan. We're sort of assisting or readjusting the loan. And I wonder if the words here are, is what's causing the political you know, uh, craziness out there because people think it's just a, a freebie. It's not necessarily a freebie in a sense that how is that different than getting a Pell Grant or any grant, for example? So if you're a student or if I'm a student, we get a grant for five or ten thousand dollars. Maybe that's another way to help those that need it most is provide additional grants. While you may not be in school and you've already maybe graduated, it could still have a positive impact on those that um, need the help the most, could it not? It absolutely could. And look, we have a through line here through the two cases that the court decided in, in, in favor of conservatives with dealing with colleges. Uh, we have the affirmative action case from a couple of days ago, and you have this case. The through line through both of them is the fact that government is using its power to try to help people, to try to help people get a leg up, to try to help people advance in society, which in theory is good for the entire nation. But what you have is a lot of pushback against people who believe that individualism is the way to go here, that we're Americans, you pull yourself up on your own bootstrap, right. and any assistance that the government gives you is tantamount to socialism. Well, so well, well, one I, of the look, reasons... I, I think we can agree that both have their their merits, right? It's not one extreme or another. And I had another person come talk to me and, and who had a lot of student loans. Uh, it's been paid off. And their response is, well, wait a minute. I paid off all my other student loans. I, in fact, I just did it. Do I get my money back? And I, I can see where this person's going with that. How do we do something that's fair for everybody or in, in our discussion, do it for the people who actually need it the most? Well, I think you're hit on something there that graduated student loan repayment, forgiveness, grants, whatever you want to call it, um, actually would go down a little bit easier with people. And that's what Biden was attempting to do with the $125,000 uh, income cap. But look, the problem we have here is that we have a government that will dole out millions to corporations, uh, even more in PPP loans that, that either got swindled out, the government was swindled out of, or people just flat out did not repay them. And there's been no check on that. So it just depends on who's buttering your bread, whether or not these kinds of programs are allowable or if they just kind of are, are anathema to, to Americans. I mean, we're, we're in favor of giving business millions of dollars because the theory is they create jobs. But when it comes to the individual, it's a lot less uh, easy to, to, to swallow. I, uh, I, I didn't think I would say this. But I do agree with you on that, and that PPP is a whole nother Pandora's box of nonsense that, that we'll just have to live with for the rest of our lives. Uh, really appreciate the, uh, the efforts here to help us analyze this and understand this problem. Uh, have a good weekend, sir. Take care.